What's up YouTube? Today we are looking at the new suite of Sonable plugins, the metering bundle. So this consists of two plugins, one called True Balance and one called True Level. True Level is basically a system designed for referencing and analyzing your loudness factor. And True Balance is designed for spectral balancing. So that's referencing either one of your favorite tracks or using the built-in systems to kind of give you a pointer as to how you've EQ'd your mix. So as some of you may know, I'm a very big fan of the Sonable plugins. I've featured them a few times before, but I thought I would just be a little bit transparent and let you know that they did send me the plugins for the purpose of this video. That being said is they haven't altered my opinion in any way. They haven't asked me to send them the video beforehand or anything like that. This is truly my personal opinion. I've also been using stuff for spectral balancing analysis for a very long time. Previously, I've been using Curve EQ by Voxingo, which actually came bundled with Cubase. And this allows you to capture a spectral snapshot of a reference track and compare your current mix to the spectral balance of your reference. So it's a really powerful technique. However, the plugin is not actually designed for this. So there's always been a couple of workarounds and shortfalls and that kind of thing. So I'm happy to announce that True Balance is definitely gonna replace that for me in my workflow, specifically because I'm not using Cubase anymore. So anyway, enough blabbering. Let's have a look at the new intelligent metering bundle from Sonable. Let's dive in and have a look. It pains me to say this, but just before we get into it, I know we're gonna have those people that are like, oh, just use your ears, bro, just use your ears. You don't need these type of things because use your ears, use your ears. <sighs> okay, so first of all, not everybody has access to a professional studio. Second of all, ears are adaptive, which means that on one day, you might be hearing bass that sounds extended and on the next day, it might not be as loud and thus changes the way that you mix your tracks. Having a specific reference point to shoot for every time is going to make your mixes better, full stop. I don't even wanna argue about this in the comments. Okay, with that aside, let's first have a look at True Balance. So one thing I think that's truly special about this plugin is I think that it's quite applicable to both professionals and beginners alike. Reason being is you've got all of these kind of more high-end values that you can extrapolate your data from, but you've also got very easy to use systems like this mono check. What this does is it basically, it checks the phase of your lows, your mids, and your highs, and it instantly tells you whether the correlation is okay, you know, whether you have stuff that's out of phase, and whether you have maybe sub that's too wide or something like that. Traditionally, we don't want wide subs, we want mono subs. Just knowing what to look for is sometimes a bit more of an advanced technique, and having stuff like the mono check to just quickly show you like, okay, you're good, move on to the next part of your mix. I think that's particularly special for beginners. We've also got the balance check. So basically how this works is you've got various different targets. You've got the specific targets that are preset by the program and with various algorithms. You can even load your own reference tracks. So this is generally how I like to do it because you know the music that I make is a little bit more niche, not very mainstream. So the spectral curves that might be apparent in the music that I make is might not, might not be the same as mainstream music that has a lot of vocal content. Um, vocals often occupy the mid-range and stuff without vocals often is a little bit reduced in the mid-range. So you want to reference with stuff that's applicable to the genre you make, of course. I'm just going to load up a reference of a track that I've actually done before. So here it's busy loading up the track and it's analyzing it. So what, I, what we can do, um, we can actually press play and it'll start analyzing the loudness of the incoming signal and compare the reference automatically to the loudness of the reference. So this is particularly handy because often we're referencing to mastered material and the volumes might be a little bit different and because of loudness differences, we might take into account a lack of mids because of Fletcher Munson's equal loudness contours, which I'm gonna post a link to explain that in the description. Basically it states that if you listen to music at different levels, you're gonna hear different spectral content. So having something that automatically puts your reference track at the same volume, it's very clever. So we're, gonna let, so we're gonna let it play for a few seconds while you can see the curve actually adjusting to suit uh, the reference material. So here's something interesting, which I think is actually really cool, is we can load up a number of tracks. It doesn't necessarily have to only be one track. We could perhaps load up a bunch of our favorite 
masters, mixers, and that kind of thing, and then extrapolate the data from an average of all of those masters, which I think is an even more powerful technique because you don't want to copy the spectral balance of just one track. You want a kind of average of what the genre you make sounds like. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to load up a couple of different tracks. Let's say, for example, just three different tracks. And you'll notice, I mean, like the spectral content of these tracks is very similar. You know, there's not much huge differences in between them. And that's because I generally use this kind of referencing technique. These tracks are all mine, by the way. They've been mastered by a professional. So I'm just using them to compare so that I, the, the future mixes that I make for this project can sound very similar. Does that make sense? So anyway, let's run the test real quick. So quickly using the balance check and the mono check, it, the program tells us whether the mix is within the range of the reference track. So obviously it's like this because I've pretty much already mixed the track. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump in and actually remove a lot of the EQ and compression and mixing tools um, and just show you quickly uh, the result that the program has uh, when the spectral balance might be completely out of whack. Okay, so you may have to turn the resolution to detail to, to get more of a detailed kind of representation because sometimes, I guess with this more kind of clinical mixes like Psytrance and electronic music, these little details are gonna really like change the balance of the track. But like in mainstream music, sometimes you want to change your balance in terms of coloration of your mix. So you might need to change the resolution to, to detailed. But as you can see, you know, when we do that, we start getting these pop-ups like you could increase uh, you could decrease the volume of the subs, increase the highs and that kind of thing. So it starts to give us some good information that we can use to jump back to the mix and fix things. So all those golden ears people, the people that are like, oh, use your ears, bro, use your ears, bro. Remember when I boosted the bass, now I've reduced the bass and it suddenly sounds like our track is lacking in subs but actually there's still too much. It's just that we blasted our ears away by listening to subs too much in the previous example that anything by default is now gonna sound like it lacks subs. So this is why reference programs are really, really important. I mean, here it's telling me like, I could adjust the lows by minus 0 0.1 dB to minus 0 0.3 dBs. That is such a minute increment that, you know, our ears would not be able to hear that. Like, definitely not. Sometimes these programs are a little bit more accurate than our ears are. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to use any EQs or anything that's going to change the actual color of the track. I'm literally just going to turn the volume down of the kick and bass by 0 0.1 dBs. Okay, let's have a look at the next plugin, True Level. So this is particularly interesting because it has various kind of target algorithms that we can shoot for. For example, Apple Music, Spotify, all these types of things, uh, which each of them having their own specific set of rules as to how loud you can submit tracks for. Generally speaking, I don't really care about those rules, to be honest with you. I generally just shoot for a, a number because most of the time when I'm performing my tracks, it's at a festival and I can control the loudness of the mixer. I'm not a huge fan of Spotify and all these other distribution platforms because they don't really do anything for the artist, in my opinion. It's just my opinion, please, let's not go there. So I generally stick away from caring about reducing the quality of my music so that I can suit distribution platforms that I generally don't give a toot about. So yes, like I said, I don't really pay too much attention to that kind of thing because I don't care too much about the streaming services. I feel like the type of music we make favors quality over quantity. Yeah, like the previous one, we have the ability to actually load up our own reference tracks and use that as the specific loudness reference, which is far more helpful than Apple Music or YouTube or Netflix deciding what sort of loudness factor our music should be. What we can do is we can load up some masters. I'm actually gonna try load up the same ones again. So one thing that I think is really cool about this plugin is they've kind of used a very intuitive interface. We have this kind of XY graph where on the left-hand side, vertically, we have the loudness uh, factor, which gets plotted out. And then along the bottom, we have the dynamics factor, which gets plotted out. 
Obviously, the more you squash a sound, the less dynamics you have. So the more loudness you're pushing for, the less dynamics you're gonna have. And so this is why I think an XY visual of this is quite handy. And as you can see, it's actually plotted these reference tracks over here. So as you can see, the input is mapped with the green uh, crosshair. And so we can now use this idea to get closer to the reference. So remember, like I was saying, the reason why I think it's so handy that we've got this dynamics and loudness meter is we can quickly see when things are becoming too squashed or when things are becoming too loud and we can kind of like use tools to adjust for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly just open up Voxingo Elephant. It's the, this is the limiter that I generally use for quick mastering tasks. And so we can just edit, we can just play around a little bit with these settings to try see if we can adjust this to suit the references. I'm gonna try to shoot for the middle of all three. So you hear, as we start pumping the gain into the limiter more, it starts to sway the crosshair over to the kind of top side and away from the dynamics factor. So it's about finding that perfect balance between loudness and dynamics. That's what loudness referencing is about, in my opinion. And just having a very quick reference tool like this, also with the quick level check, super handy. So we also have the ability to monitor the true peak levels. So what a true peak is different to a regular peak is you have values in between the samples that are caused by quantization, distortion, dithering, and all these kinds of things. You can imagine it as a higher resolution uh, factor of numbers. So if we have a one and then another one in between and then another one, these are all three values. Value number one gets read by the peak meter and value number three gets read by the peak meter but often value number two slips through. And that's where having a true peak meter is very handy because we can actually see that we're peaking by plus seven. So in analog situations, you probably won't have too much of an issue because of inertia. That's the amount of time that it actually takes the driver to move backwards and forwards. And this often can counteract true peak. That being said, that being said is it's not a hard rule. So I'd always use these kinds of things as a reference, specifically if you're not too familiar with what you're doing. So we can use the out gain or the ceiling, which is the threshold of a limiter to reduce the true peak level. And at the same time, use the in gain to kind of boost the loudness factor closer to what we're looking for here. So I will generally shoot for minus 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 true peak, just because sometimes things can overshoot. You know, you might be metering it and something later on down the line in the track might overshoot that threshold. So yeah, don't always shoot for the zero because sometimes that doesn't make that much of a difference. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Big shout out to Sonable for actually sending me the plugin for the purpose of this video. If you like what I do here and you want to support me, consider heading over to my Patreon or checking out some of the products which I sell on my store. So that's Vital, Serum, Phase Plant, Snap Peep, all sorts of different preset packs that you can check out. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe on your way out. See you guys next time. Cheers.